Okay. Good morning, Mayor. Good it's morning. good to see you here today. Great to see you too. How are you? Really well, thank you. Um, thank you for joining me um, because I am advocating for contractors out there who are not getting paid at the moment. Um, Maya, how, what's going on with the industry, uh, economy ch shifting? Uh, some of these larger contracts uh, and co contractors are not getting paid. How Are you seeing a lot of that happen right now? Have you, have you had to handle some of these cases? Yes, uh, construction has been very busy the last few years. Even COVID didn't slow it down because we were lucky that um, uh, the state of California announced that construction is an essential business. Uh, so construction has been busy. The majority of our cases, however, that are coming to us is when the clients um, get the job done or they're halfway through the job and there are payment issues and they don't get paid by either another contractor or by the owner of the project. So we've seen a lot of these in the last three years, especially. Can you can you maybe talk about a case that you just handled recently where a contractor was, you know, doing a good contractor was really working on a case and and they were just struggling to I think I think a lot of them used the word squeeze. They were squeezed with payment issues. Um yes. So uh, it was the beginning of 2020 when um, a uh, friend who's a business attorney introduced one of his clients to us. This company has been around for about 25 years and they do around 30 to $40 million a year. So middle-sized company. Right. But they've been around and established and it's stable and they have very good reputation in the industry. They're very highly specialized in a particular industry that they are. Uh, and to keep anonymity, I'm not going to mention sure. what type sure. of work they do. They had um, contracted to do a $2.1 million contract and they had performed the contract. There was no dispute as to the quality of their work or that they had finished the job properly, but the owner had left about a half of the contract, $900,000 unpaid for over a year. Our friend who's the business transactional attorney had gone on a campaign of sending letters, uh, getting documents together and could not get a response from the owner. So what we did was we came in and uh, we filed a mechanics lien and we started litigating the matter. And first of all, as soon as we filed a mechanics lien, the owner's attention was there. Mm. They could no longer ignore. And then with a proper uh, lawsuit and going through the motion, we were able to bring them down to sit for a mediation. And we were able to resolve it and uh, settle it for almost the whole amount, not quite the whole amount because my client got really excited when he heard what they want to pay and right. he sold. And I said, wow. okay, we could probably get you a little bit more. And he's like, I am good. Uh, so that's um, one of the cases we have handled. And that client has come back to us over and over for other payment issues that we're working with them. So Mayara, getting not getting paid for a whole entire year sounds so negligent um, from from the property owner standpoint. But but you you were able to file a mechanics lien. What is what is the time period where you cannot file a mechanics lien? Uh, you can record a mechanics lien usually up to 90 days after the project is finished. We had some loopholes in this particular uh, project that we were able to use and we filed it and it got their attention. But everybody right. 
who is in construction has to know that once you're finished in a job, uh, mark your calendar, you only have 90 days, and then you can record a mechanics lien, but that doesn't really become a lien unless a lawsuit is filed and there's another 90 days for that. So don't let a mechanics lien that you recorded sit around and think, well, I have a lien. No, you do not. Um, it does create a cloud on the title, uh, what we mean by that is that if the owner wants to refinance or any other type of loan they want to get, they probably won't be able to do it because it will show that a mechanics lien was recorded because we record it with the county recorder's office, but it will not become a full-on lien until after the lawsuit has been filed and come to its conclusion. So let's backtrack a little bit. So okay. this is like you know, um, after the fact and you're not getting paid, but is there a way we can prevent some of these things at the start, whether it's a, a contract or an agreement um, and, and what needs to be done at that stage, you know, before work commences? Right. So nobody can guarantee that you can completely prevent a lawsuit because under the laws of the state of California, um, uh, you can, anybody can go file a lawsuit. What we can do is put in mechanisms that would minimize uh, the chance of a lawsuit getting anywhere. And those consist of having the right contract, making sure the right terms are on the contract, making sure you document your work properly uh, during the course of construction, making sure you communicate well with the other side, and once you're done with the construction, putting make the calendar items on the calendar to make sure that you file and record the mechanics lien when it's time. Those types of things um, do a lot in the final conclusion of our clients getting paid. Excellent. Well, that's really good. A good tip right there for contractors. Um, and I guess some contractors might be going online and using like legal zoom or, you know, one of these mill, mill, mill contracts that are out there. Um, wh what's your thoughts on some of those legal zoom kind of contracts for contractors? One of the problems we see a lot of these days is the, the fact that you can go on Google and type construction contract and a hundred different contracts come come right, up. Right. People do that and they think they're set. What they don't realize is the legal significance of the various provisions of the contract and what should be in there, what shouldn't be. The other issue they don't realize is if you're in California, your contract has to abide by California law. Different states have different legal systems, different um, rules to live by. So people don't realize that mm -hmm. these one size fit all um, contracts are not good for customizing it to the mm -hmm. needs of the client. I always right. say it's almost like going to a discount store, and I won't name any names, to buy your wedding outfit. Would you do that? You <laughs> That's a good a, analogy. <laughs> a discount store too, or would you go somewhere uh, that you make sure someone who knows what they're doing, uh, they are giving you the right advice and right contract to use. No, that's awesome. So you are located in Orange County. Uh, Mayaga Seaman Law Group is something that you've started and it's, I think it just got an award for the one of the fastest growing construction uh, law firms in, in Southern California. Is it Southern California or nationwide? It's nationwide. Nationwide. Yeah, we have, we have um, been growing very fast thanks to our wonderful clients. Congratulations. Um, you. you know, if there was one last tip that you would give these contractors, um, what would it be? I mean, if, I mean, right now we're heading into a recession in the economy, projects are still going on, I I, I think. Um, if there was one tip that you would want to leave uh, with us today, what would it be? 
have your contracts properly reviewed by an attorney um believe me if you get into a lawsuit it costs tens sometimes hundreds of thousands of dollars and a little bit of prevention up front is the same as the old saying you know an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Right. It's literally true in construction. So have an attorney who uh, focuses on construction law in California, take a look at your contracts and give you some advice before you start or during the course of the contract when a problem, you're in construction and a problem comes along call up an attorney, have a relationship with an attorney where you can call them up and tell them, hey, this has happened. What can I do to uh, prevent this from becoming a major lawsuit? And we'd be happy to help. Well, thank you so much, Maya. I look forward to speaking with you again. Um, I hope that as contractors out there um, take on projects, they will at least come to you for some advice uh, on how to get the contract set up and most of all get paid in the end. Thank you. Thank you, Hama. I appreciate it. Thank you. Bye-bye.